Hi everyone, welcome back to DC Conversations. The love affair between India and Switzerland goes beyond the silver screens. We've seen so many movies and we've been dreaming about going to the Switzerland and skiing in the Alps, remember? So today we have a very special guest with us. Uh, he's uh, Mr. Bosshart, Simon Bosshart and um, he is the Asia Switzerland Tourism Director and he's here with us today to talk about what makes Switzerland most preferred tourist destination for Indians. So let's find out more. Welcome to DC Conversations. Mr. Simon, what brings you to India? Well, I'm, I'm here on a, on a professional mission. I'm uh, working for the National Tourism Board of Switzerland, Switzerland Tourism, uh, as head of markets east. I'm in charge for all the markets east of the Rhine River. That means from Germany all the way to uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, so that includes, of course, as well, India, which is one of our most important growth markets um, uh, on, a, on a global scale. Um, well, on a, on a personal note, I'm always uh, really excited to come back to India. I've been traveling privately uh, in the past, and I use uh, this as well, of course, an opportunity to get uh, a clinch of uh, of getting to know the country much better. And I have to say, I'm, I'm every time I get excited, and we just had a very good launch. So uh, especially about food. I'm a foodie from Switzerland, so I really enjoy That's my time fun. here in India. Yeah, that's good. So did you get to eat something here in Hyderabad? Yes, I had Hyderabad, well, the biryani here from from uh, from Hyderabad, which was really good. And then I got a personal tip from some somebody called uh, for, for a dessert called Double double Kameti, yes, which is really Rita, good. Yeah. And I, I have to say, if Swiss says a dessert is good, you know, we're very sensitive on desserts. But I have to say, wow, this is world class, really good. Very surprising. So. Yes. I'm very yeah. happy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so Switzerland is very famous, at least for Indians. It's like through movies, we've got to know more about Switzerland because I think there is there are at least two, three songs sh- uh, short in the country. Uh, you know, so uh, mm-hmm. what kind of uh, tourist revenue uh, is do you get? I mean, what does India share? Yes, well, that's a bit of a question. It's, it's a bit of difficult to answer to the question because we do, as a National Tourism Board, I mean, as silly as it sounds, revenue would be the most important, but it's a figure that we do not get in an accurate uh, uh, way. I mean, we can only do estimations. We do not have a direct source to get to get the, the revenue really out. So what we can do is, <laughs> or what we can, what we can roughly quote is, we know that there are, well, I'm talking about the last year, for example, there were, uh, roughly 600,000 overnights done in hotels uh, in Switzerland uh, from the from the Indian market. Uh, there was an additional, probably around, I would say, 400,000 um, overnights done in uh, private accommodation. That means in holiday apartments out of India. We estimate an average of um, 300 uh, Swiss francs uh, spent per Indian guest in Switzerland. That means that's not including the flights. That's just what happens in the country. So if you mm. if you co- uh, collate that together, that's roughly 300 uh, million US dollars uh, revenue coming now really from tourism. This includes leisure tourism. This includes uh, business uh, tourism, uh, incentive tourism out of out of India. Now, you were asking as well, let's say, in all, all, all the commercial fields here, I'm really, um, it's really difficult to estimate, especially, in, let's say, uh, the film industry, which you have been pushing, uh, pulling out. I mean, direct income from the film industry, I could really not tell you how much that is. I would say uh, just perhaps uh, relate to this Bollywood in the past, or let's say the productions in Switzerland, this was really like a 20, 30 years ago when, when Switzerland probably was a hotspot for, for shooting movies in, in the white uh, wonderland of Switzerland, in the green grass of, of the Alps. Uh, nowadays, there are still f- uh, film productions done in Switzerland, probably but probably on a, on a much lesser degree. But what the incomes are directly now from the productions, it's difficult to say what the, how to say, the income is, or let's say created or triggered by the film industry, I would say still today, yes, this is important. I would say whenever you talk to Indian guests, let's say Bollywood is always very close to people, especially probably in a specific age group, perhaps less with, with the younger ones. But still, I think Bollywood has a, 
an immense impact on on tourism, which is yeah what we understand also the fact that that Switzerland probably is if not the main destination, but one definitely of the top destinations of Indian guests uh, when coming to Europe. And that's 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 a standalone factor, I really have to say, for overseas markets. <laughs> um, like we have a lot of overseas guests. It's not the largest group, but uh, India is, to my knowledge, the only destination where Switzerland really is the main destination within Europe. Are there a set of locations that, uh, you know, people keep coming back to, uh... I mean, for shoots as well as uh, in terms of tourism, what is the most visited uh, spots, like hot spots in Switzerland? Uh, from from Indian guests, you mean? Yes, right? yes, yes. Well, <clears throat> there have been some some destinations, uh, some Indian des- uh, some Swiss destinations, of course, being very active on the Indian market, uh, namely and probably foremost uh, in the mountains. That was that was uh, the central central Switzerland uh, mountain uh, area called Titlis or the, the village close by Engelberg. They've been very mm-hmm. active in India and they have attracted a lot of. Um, of of Indian uh, tour guests in in the past and still today, uh, probably also because they fit very much how to say this this uh, this image of Switzerland that that Indians are aiming for with you know with the mountains uh, you're surrounded by mountains you still have this some fresh air you have the me- the meadows you have the cows you have the water you have the the the, the, the little villages so that that's very strong second region is is the Jungfrau region. Uh, Interlaken uh, area and the Jungfrau of uh, <coughs> Europe, of course, which has been very, very uh, active in in the market since many years. So many people travel here, but this is this is going to ex- expand as well uh, beyond now, and that's also a focus that we have. I mean, there is nothing wrong and about about visiting uh, the Jungfrau region and and Titel is not at all, and these are still highlights and still still people do, but there is much more to explore. So. Our our focus today, and also that we see that this is something that is happening, that the Indian guests would like to see more beyond, let's say, uh, the, the the most known landmarks, so more more into the hidden gems of Switzerland. So, which countries top the list in terms of overnights? Um, on a global level, well, first of all, um, probably not astonishingly uh, astonishing, but but very important. It's the Swiss, the domestic market. So, the main destination for Switzerland is Switzerland, um, uh, wow. with approximately a share of fifty over fifty percent uh, of the the hotel revenue done, or now the hotel overnights done, not the revenue uh, from Swiss customers uh, traveling in Switzerland. And this is very important. Uh, that's our backbone. Uh, and that was especially important during COVID times when international travel was basically coming to a complete stop. Uh, Swiss were still traveling heavily in Switzerland. So this this brought Switzerland back uh, last year already on pre-COVID levels in terms of tourism. So we've, we fully recovered as a, de- as a destination. And that's, that's quite a, a stunning fact and something which makes us proud. But also, I have to say, quite um, uh, quite happy about where we, where we stand uh, because uh, domestic market is, is super important. Second um, destination is uh, our neighbor, Germany, um, mm-hmm. uh, following, of course, with uh, with approximately 10 to, to, to 12 percent, I would say, of, uh, of overnights being done out of Germany. And then uh, third destination, and this is quite astonishing, that's already overseas, that's the United States. Uh, as the third largest market. Now, uh, yeah. post-COVID, we are still a bit distorted. In the past, for destination number four was in Asia, was China, Greater China. That's uh, China is far off um, uh, now, or uh, more or less on, a, on an equal level now with, with, uh, with India, very close to India. Um, but in the meantime, of course, the main destinations, they are in Europe, they are UK, they are France, they're Italy. Um, so the neighboring countries, uh, then followed by GCC, and then we are in Asia. Then we are in Asia with uh, China, India, and Southeast Asia, some sort of in the in the upper middle field um, of of source markets for Switzerland. Okay, so as far as I know, uh, Switzerland is the most preferred destination for Indians. I mean, at least after Paris, they want to go to Switzerland. You know, it's like a must visit kind of destination when they're on a tour of Europe. So what uh, kind of uh, campaigns are you planning to boost this further? Well, we, 
Uh, we first of all, I mean, we we do run um, global campaigns, or let's say global a, a global market strategy or marketing strategy. What we are aiming for, first of all, and this is a global topic which we are running as well in India. That's uh, sustainable travel. I mean, it's 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 not just a market campaign. This is some sort of a fundamental change um, of the entire. Um, tourism industry, receiving tourism industry. So we want to produce, we want to be the most sustainable destination in the world. That means we want to produce more sustainably, uh, ecologically sustainable. That means reduce waste, uh, save energy, uh, and let's say all the various aspects that this takes. Uh, but uh, also in terms, uh, let's say, of social responsibility and uh, economic sustainability. So that's that's a big thing. And of course, uh, accordingly, we run marketing campaigns and we run uh, product campaigns all around the world, including India. That's that's definitely a strong, uh, a growing focus. We're running an autumn uh, um, an, a campaign really to extend the season. So we're running an autumn campaign this year uh, with the focus uh, definitely on the um uh, on on the european markets including switzerland but uh, as well with a very strong focus on the overseas market so in a market uh, of india where the um how do you say the main season is in may april may june in this in this area where, where in the past like 65 percent of all the overnights were done uh we tried to flatten the curve because i mean for two reasons let's say from a destination perspective uh, the best is, of course, if you can some sort of balance over the year uh, the arrival of guests. Uh, that's very logic. That's not just the, the job of one market, but that's, of course, in all the balance. Um, yeah. But uh, it's very important. And and here, a market which peaks really in one time, and, and India was really extreme in this, like there's one peak in the year and the rest is, is going uh, very much down. Uh, our efforts go very much on trying to flatten the curve, and the good uh, the good thing is this is actually happening uh, already now. Probably also a bit triggered by COVID and by yeah. uh, certain um, how to say missing availabilities uh, for for transportation resources you need as a traveler. Also due to the fact probably that people try to avoid more the masses to travel in masses, but also due to the beauty. And the second thing, and and here we are more on the guest side. Autumn is also, first of all, it's a super experience. Uh, uh, it's still warm. It's nice. Golden autumn in, in, in Europe and in Switzerland is marvelously beautiful. It's the harvest time, let's say, when, when all the grapes are picked, when all the, the, the apples are coming down. And so it's it's some sort of a very rich uh, a, a rich time also to experience. It's full. It's really for all the senses. It's full of or full of experience. And uh, it's also a time from a guest perspective, perhaps when not so many people are traveling right now. So you have much more capacity. And I think as much as, as Indians are used to, to a lot of guests everywhere, I, I believe during holidays, they're also quite happy to take a break of being always pushed around and, and being some sort of in, in the mass. So this is also a different experience that we can offer. And now, specifically in the Indian market, of course, we, we do very much localize our marketing. We have big topics we're running, like what I just mentioned, but we try to localize this uh, because the the interest or the, the wishes of every of every group of guests in every market, in every region even, is, is completely different. So in, in India, we are focusing very strong um, on our local brand ambassadors, Neraj Chopra. Uh, who is working with us? Who is uh, obviously a, a rising star uh, on the on the on the on the um, how to say in the heaven of stars uh, in India, and we are very proud to have him. I have to say here, this is not just we are not just striving for the most important or the most uh, um, uh, well-known people in the market, but we always look at people who are really interested in the destination and to, who do somehow transport naturally the message that we have or represent the kind of guests we we would welcome to Switzerland. And and Neraj uh, is is very much fitting into this Swiss image. He's an outdoorsy person. He's very uh, uh, close to nature. He's a nature boy himself. So uh, and he loves Switzerland. He's uh, obviously he has come to Switzerland for for many competitions. So he loves to come. So when he says he's in love with Switzerland, it's not just because he's our brand ambassador and because he's working yeah. for us, but because he really feels like this. So 
that's a big campaign we're running right now. Um, we are uh, uh, executing this this campaign as of now in in um, the big cities, Mumbai and Delhi, uh, and we're continuing to work with him. And perhaps two other uh, topics that I would like to mention in this context: it's public transportation, very important. We are um, uh, uh, like the, the product we're really most proud of, apart from the mountains, of course, and and the nature uh, which which we can which we can work with. It's public transportation in Switzerland. And here, um, India is one of the top markets globally already. Uh, Swiss public transportation system is a fully integrated system. That means every means of transportation, every tram, every bus, every boat, every train, every mountain cableway is fully integrated into the system, is well tuned and synchronized in terms of timings. That means if you if you arrive in one city and you want to hop to the next city, you, you will not miss the train by five minutes because or 10 minutes because it was already leaving, but it's very, very well synchronized. Uh, all this, we have it bundled into a product which is called the Swiss Travel Pass. That's basically a one country pass. It's like a, a master key to Switzerland. With the Swiss Travel Pass in your hand, uh, you can decide for three days, four days, six days, eight days or 15 days consecutive days, you can travel around in Switzerland and you can just hop on, hop off any public transportation uh, that you encounter and you do not have to worry anymore. And seat reservations on the most trains are not necessary. So it's it's such an easy way to travel around. And believe me, I'm, 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 a, I'm a heavy traveler. I really know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's that's that's the most painful thing if you have to think. Well, when is the train leaving? Is it the right train I'm taking? Where is it? You know how how does it connect together? You don't understand so much as a as a as a as, a, as an international traveler. So if if this problem is solved for you, that's good. And and obviously this is the reason why uh, a lot of Indians really are in love with with the Swiss trains, um, which is a, which is a very essential part of the experience. And perhaps as last um, uh, thing to mention, uh, I was talking about the seasons before about autumn. So a second season we're really promoting is winter. We would like to 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 dive into more. I mean, this is probably the most ex exotic experience for most Indians um, coming to Switzerland. That's that's some sort of that there is this cold kind of thing of snow called snow falling down from the, from sky. Uh, which is an experience that most Indians cannot make in their daily life, uh, or you have to really go to the to the far north uh, uh, of the country uh, to to experience. Uh, so, so this is this is our winter experience that we offer, and we would like to explain Indian guests coming to Switzerland how to winter. How to winter means what you can experience in Switzerland, what is really special in terms of cultural experiences, but also what is special about outdoor experience for example skiing sledge riding uh, winter winter hiking and so on uh, a market actually which you really feel now it's it's very small it's very 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 niche um, in india this outdoor market but something that is picking up for the next years so we're very confident that people will be interested in this experience so what changes have you noticed in travel trends post covid because there's a lot that changed you know i mean has even the way people travel, has it changed uh, after COVID happened? Um, it's it's still relatively, how to say, um, early to say. Or what, what you can say is what, what immediately changed, right, in the, in the time after COVID. Whether this is sustainable in the sense of uh, going, continuously um, going on like this, this is, is probably a bit early to say. <laughs> What, what I say, and, and don't, don't get me wrong on this, I think Switzerland as a destination has very much profited of the um uh, of the covid crisis i mean first of all during the covid crisis we were relatively um safe due to the fact what i explained already with with the with the, with the home market yeah. uh, and after covid we feel and this is now globally but also including india there is quite um how to say a high trust in the destination uh, in the destination of Switzerland and I think this is very very strongly linked to COVID. People are looking for safe destinations, uh, reliable destinations, reliable services, convenience um, um, which where things work as you want them to work and I think this is what Switzerland has to profit so uh, so it has to offer so 
They said, we really see on a global scale that we have recovered by far better than many other countries, especially also in, in, in a European context. I'm not saying that Switzerland is the only uh, the destination that is recovering, and I'm not saying that Switzerland is the only safe destination in the world, not at all, but this is this is definitely a perception which works for Switzerland um, very, very well. Now, talking about India, uh, th- definitely an experience that we can, uh, that we can encounter here, I mean, these trends, uh, they, they are confirmed here as well. Uh, a relatively high spending power um, out of out of also globally, but also out of the Indian market. I mean, Switzerland has always the disadvantage of not being a cheap destination. Switzerland has also the disadvantage of being a destination with a very strong currency. That means every crisis, we get hit uh, double hard because first of all, uh, we are not cheap. And secondly, uh, we are, um, how do you say, our currency even goes up. That means we, compared to other destinations, we, we, we even get, more, get up more in price. But astonishingly, uh, we do not really uh, see a big effect now of, um, like, or a big impact by that. On the contrary, a lot of people, they, despite the price, they travel. And even though the price is high, they seem to be even spending on more exclusive things or in more expensive uh, things, for example, like upgrading uh, from economy class to premium economy to business class when it comes to the flights and and accordingly also for the, for the products they consume then when they come to Switzerland. Very important as well is um, mono destination uh, Switzerland. So people travel um, again out of uh, globally, we see that, but also out of the Indian market that staying only in Switzerland, spending more time in Switzerland, that seems to have changed. That's probably an ongoing trend also from previous years, but specifically, and perhaps triggered also by COVID, this this became even stronger. Uh, More active traveling, like India, let's say 10 years ago, uh, talking about the Indian market, it was a very passive traveling uh, or way of traveling. You were on a coach. Uh, definitely not moving too much, but we see that people, perhaps also with more younger people, more urban uh, visitors, which which are used to a very, how to say, um, urban lifestyle where where moving is a privilege. So people come to Switzerland, they really want to move, they want to they want to do something, they want to be outdoorsy. This is also a reason why we work with Nerat Chopra because that's exactly the the kind of lifestyle that he represents. Um, less escorted uh, trips, let's say more individual travels. So not just going with a group and walking behind the, the escort, but but exploring things on your own. Um, traveling more in smaller groups of friends and families. These these are all the things that um, that uh, that that we feel now out of India that has become stronger. And honestly, again from this, I have been starting with uh, saying that. Uh, We've profited of COVID, like we, we were relatively safe during COVID, but also we profited of an after COVID behavior of guests. It really plays into the strategy of Switzerland tourism. Um, and uh, on that note, could you tell us something about the Swiss sustainable initiatives that you've come up with? You are more on sustainability and all that. Yeah, no, with pleasure. I have been talking about Swiss sustainable before already, perhaps not repeating yeah, myself. Yeah, you did. Yes, sustainable yes, yes. sustainable is, a, is, a, is a supplier program, first of all. It's a part program for the whole industry. So we, we are inviting every uh, service provider in Switzerland, means hotels, uh, private accommodation, uh, restaurants, gastronomy, uh, cableways, transportation companies, but also service providers, let's say outdoor um, guides. And so, so we, we try to onboard everybody and we say, try within your scope of business or in your business scope to become more sustainable. So that you cannot you know, cannot put it on in one point what that means. For some, it means waste reduction. For some, it means energy saving. For some, I don't know, it means to source more locally. Whatever whatever it is, so everybody has to decide on in his own uh, environment what he wants to do. And this is what we s- summarize now on the uh, Swiss Daily. But if you commit as a supplier to be part of this program, you become uh, labeled as sustainable. And the more systematic you do that, that means the more you run really all your business processes through this uh, sustainability uh, scope, uh, the higher you get in the level. We have, I mean, this is this is a call to all the industry. Uh, we estimate there are roughly around 40,000 
suppliers. I mean, from very small companies to large, um, larger groups of hotels. So 40,000. We are currently at uh, 2,600 um, registered companies for <coughs> part of the program. Now, uh, is this a lot? It's a beginning. Uh, it's definitely not, uh, we, don't, we definitely didn't reach our goal yet. Uh, we definitely want to go on, but we are just working on it since two years. And onboarding, you know, that's not just uh, clicking, uh, clicking, uh, clicking, uh, how to say a box on a, on, a, on a website and then you're part of the program. I mean, you have to really work for it. You have yeah. to also invest money and time and a lot of efforts into the program. So to onboard companies, that's quite a, a challenge. So I think... We are happy with the results we have. Uh, we are on a good course forward, but we are far not where we want to be uh, because we have the aim of becoming the most sustainable destination. Uh, and this means uh, if we want to take it, uh, what that means, uh, and we want to really do it uh, seriously, so we, we need much more. At the end of the day, it should it should lead to a point where you as a traveler, for example, from India coming to Switzerland, you should be able to experience Switzerland as a sustainable destination <coughs> without going to do a big research, finding hotels which produce, but that basically the offer is naturally sustain more sustainable. Uh, that 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 you that the offer is just uh, uh, what what you're actually what you're actually aiming for, and that's that's pretty much the core of our sustainability program. Of course, then around this now in every market, including India as well. We start now to build up um, activities, campaigns uh, around the topic where we talk about it, where we raise the awareness, but where we are also sitting together with, with uh, travel agents, uh, tour operators, wholesalers, and look how they can, how to say, refurbish, let's say, their inventory or refurbish their program to become more sustainable. And we just had this this morning in Hyderabad, we had a workshop with uh, roughly 70 representatives of the local travel industry, um, teaching them over three hours uh, about the Swiss product. Public transportation is a big part of this. Swiss sustainable was a big part of this. So we are really, we are really going down to the to the to the source now and actually try to get that into 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 uh, into real real actions, real business. Yeah, nice. And one last question. So uh, you know, uh, visiting a foreign country is more aspirational for tourists. So it, it involves like, you know, first thing they think about is the price of the tickets and then stay there. And then most importantly, it's the visa process, right? So mm -hmm. several uh, Southeast Asian countries have made it uh, uh, visa-free entry for a couple. They, they're doing it like in for shorter durations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you want to, do you, are you thinking uh, of uh, easing this visa process for anybody, not just Indians? Uh, uh, do you have any such plans? to actually increase the uh, tourist Indian tourist influx to Switzerland. Look, this is my dream that that Switzerland is visa free is my dream as a tourism expert since many years, of course. The, 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 the problem is we as the National Tourism Board of Switzerland, we have no impact, really zero impact on the visa policy. Uh, policies of Switzerland. Uh, we are in connection with uh, with the related uh, with the re related government agencies, but uh, there is no impact neither on a specific de decision. Even if there is a group and has, uh, having a problem, we cannot we can change it and the policy not and the process not and the that's the requirement document uh, required documents. Uh, also, what Switzerland as a country has to say on the visa policy of Switzerland actually is very limited because Switzerland is part of Schengen. Schengen is uh, a, um, a frontier immigration and tax um, agreement between 17 countries in Europe, including Switzerland. Yeah. So it's not EU, it's, it's Schengen. It's a, it's, a, it's a different group of countries. So whatever happens on the visa, on the visa side is always synchronized between all the countries. That's probably a, from an Indian understanding. It's it's very different. I mean, India decides what India does. Switzerland, uh, or let's say Schengen, obviously works different. So, if Switzerland says we want to shorten the the process, we want to you know cancel the visas for Indians. I mean, it would not be possible. It would not be possible uh, within within a, a Schengen uh, context. That's that's that would only be possible if it is done within, uh, let's say, the, the context of all the 17 countries. And you can imagine that 17 governments uh, working together 
uh, getting an agreement on something, you can imagine how difficult this is. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty much a mission impossible. Um, now, for facilitation, yes, there are certain there are certain things uh, ongoing uh, on this. First of all, uh, there is a discussion about uh, no, there is well actually a concrete plan now uh, of introducing uh, an e-visa, a digital visa, which would of course be a super um, facilitation. Uh, for for the whole application process and for the registration, like India does it. India has an e-visa now. I'm an e-visa holder, so this is this is much easier, of course, to to go through the process. But this will take time. And uh, currently, the timeline on on, on the Swiss side is uh, 2028 uh, of an implementation of e-visa. So this takes time until this works. Um, Besides that, there is an ongoing process or rework of the documents. I mean, the, the but this is you know the Schengen Codex. That's a book of like uh, like five hundred pages of of rules and regulations. So uh, it's not going to be uh, definitely not going to be abolished. There is no plan of abolishing the visas on a how to say on a global on a global stance. There are some countries or bilateral agreements or let's say Schengen with a specific country agreements on facilitating visas, especially specifically in Middle East. But uh, let's say for the for the for the most visa countries, including India, including the countries in Southeast Asia and uh, uh, China and, and Russia, there is definitely no uh, um how to say no question about abolishing the visa completely. Yeah, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us. It was it's a great uh, conversation. Thank you. Great Thank best. you for your time. For the, best and the, the opportunity. Mm -hmm.